Good News program. We're so thankful that you tuned in. We have a new theme now until the Lord comes and that is the rapture. Here we have the Christ coming in the clouds to take us to be with him and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And for those of you that do not know Christ as Savior and you do not understand what we're talking about, the Bible verse is right here for you. And this is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So if you don't know these truths and you're not looking for Christ, it's because you are not born again because he says in first Thessalonians now the book of Thessalonians is for the soon coming king each chapter speaks of Christ coming and chapter 1 verse 10 teaches us and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead even Jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come and that is the beginning of Revelation 6, the wrath that's coming on the earth. True believers are delivered from the book of Revelation and the time when the Antichrist is going to reign. We are going to be raptured before that time comes. And this is the hope. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning in verse 13, but I would not have you to be ignorant concerning those that are asleep, concerning those that have died. There's no such thing as soul sleep. There is not any such thing as purgatory. You can never pray anyone out of purgatory or out of hell. Hell is real. Purgatory is not. It's not in this book. Hell is a place where you go you choose to go there when you reject Christ as Savior. And this is that for those that have died for us as loved ones, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For us as believers, we have this hope and we know this is true because God cannot lie. His word is true. You can't change it because he is, Christ is the living word. And then it says in verse 14, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Christ, Jesus, this is, sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. We're going to come back with him after the seven-year tribulation period to reign on this earth a thousand years. And Satan will be in the the bottomless pit while we are reigning with Christ in perfect peace and righteousness. And then verse 15, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. We are going to be caught up with Christ. For, and verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Their body is all that is left. The, the spirit and soul are already with the Lord. 
and they are going to be raised first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet them in the clouds, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's when our bodies are going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. That's when the trump of God is going to sound and we are going to be raised. And this time on earth is going to be much worse than anything you have ever seen because there's going to be cars that are going to be left without a driver. There's going to be planes that's going to be left without a pilot. Every person that is a true child of God will be raptured to be with the Lord. And then the world will be in the most confusion it has ever been because the Antichrist is going to be reigning. And if you don't accept the worship that he desires you to worship him, you will be martyred for your faith. This is what God's word says. So if you don't know these truths, then it's because you're not born again. Because in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9, But as it is written, I hath nor seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. Oh, what glories he has. And then in Isaiah 64, verse 4, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, neither perceived by the ear, neither hath I seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. Looking for the rapture. Every one of us should be looking for this rapture every day. But as I believe it will be on the first day of the week, because that's when Christ arose, and that's when the Spirit of God came, and that's when John on the Isle of Patmos, he was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day, and, Christ, and this is when our Lord showed him the awful things that's going to happen in the book of Revelation, but he revealed the glories of Christ for those of us that are going to be in heaven. And then in 1 Corinthians, why we're here, we can see verse chapter 1, verse 30. But of him are ye in Christ. Now, if you're in Christ, this is you. Jesus, who of God, is made unto us wisdom, we have no wisdom apart from God. He's our wisdom, righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for these truths. We're thankful for eternal life. We're thankful for those that are listening. We pray today that they will call upon thee to save them and believe in the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses from all sin. And we thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers today. Thank thee that we're sitting together in heavenly places in Christ. And these are the treasures, the inheritance that we have as true believers. Thank thee for all that thou art to each of us. Thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So we can see that in Christ we have redemption through his blood. Now you must know these truths, every person that's listening, that you cannot be saved apart from the blood of Jesus Christ. And as we come to the book of, Thessalon of Ephesians today, chapter 2, we saw the riches of our inheritance in chapter 1. And then in chapter 2, he tells the condition of man that man is guilty, he is dead in trespasses and sin. And that we, before we were saved, children of wrath and children of disobedience. And that we were a child of the prince of the power of the air. That means every person that's not a child of God is a child of the devil. Every person that is not a child of God is a child of the devil. 
That's why we see the hatred that we have today. That's why we see the murders that we have today, because Paul was called in Acts 26, 18, that you are in darkness. He says to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness into light and from the power of Satan unto God. And this is what's wrong with the world. Satan has your eyes blinded so you cannot know these truths until you're a child of God. So he says, but God, who's rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Now God comes and make known, makes known the riches of his mercy for his great love wherein he loved us. And this is why that we read and always have this as our theme also, Ephesians 2, 7, that the riches of the glory of the inheritance of the saints of God, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. Everything is by grace. Now, if you're saved, it's because of God's grace. You see, you can't be saved apart from the truth of God's word. Faith is just believing what God says he will do. So what do I have to do? Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So without faith, I cannot know the truth. So then I am condemned to die. To be condemned means that I am going to die. I'm on death row, just the same as any person that's on death row. Because condemnation means I am guilty. He says that the wages of sin is death for those that don't know Christ. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And he came not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on the him, on the Lord Jesus Christ, is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So we have three dispensations, the Old Testament dispensation of the Father, from Abel to John the Baptist. In the Old Testament, the fear of God is there 600 times in the Old Testament. They had a great sense of sin. That sin is real, and with it comes sorrow, perilousness, no power at all in our prayers or in our life, and hopelessness. There is no hope outside of Christ. And he tells us this in Ephesians 2. Wherefore, remember, Ephesians 2, 11, that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision of the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ in the world, being aliens from the covenants and the promises and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. That's what's wrong with the world today. But God, who is now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. So here I have hope and I have faith that now I am in Christ. No fear. And then they believed their belief was of the Messiah. The Jews look forward to the coming of Christ. Just as we are to look for the rapture, they are still looking for the Messiah today. You see, here's what they believe, and this is the truth of God's word. The Messiah in the Old Testament is the Hebrew word, and Christ is the New Testament word. This means the anointed one. So they were looking for the Messiah. Now this is the Old Testament dispensation. This is the dispensation of the Son. The dispensation of the Father was the fear of God, the sense of sin, 
and the belief of the Messiah and the dispensation now of the Son, the Gospels, a period of our Lord's earthly ministry, a time of great power in the Word, and then the promise of the Holy Spirit as comforter and the spirit of truth and the witness of looking forward to that day of the Holy Spirit. And that came on the day of Pentecost. And the Jews are looking for their Messiah today, and we're looking for the rapture, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And then the dispensation of the Spirit, beginning in Acts, through the epistles, all the way through Revelation, to the present time that we're living in. The day of Pentecost came, the record of the Christian life as lived, a life of rich personal experiences. And this, if you don't know what the riches of his life is, you don't know nothing of salvation. So this is, for this life now, our experiences on this earth. The fullness of faith, the fullness of wisdom, we just read those. And then the fullness of hope, we just read that. And the fullness of joy, all of these come with our inheritance. The fullness of the Holy Spirit. And this is what gives us power in the Spirit of God. Now, how did we get how do are we born? We're all born sinners. Every person that's living is a sinner. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Every person is born without Christ. But Adam and Eve, God created Adam out of the dust. They had a perfect body, soul, and spirit. In his unfallen state, the spirit of man was illuminated from heaven. But when Adam sinned, sin closed the door of the window of the spirit and pulled down the curtain on the chamber of the spirit. And it became a death chamber and remained so in every unregenerate heart every person until the life and light giving power of the Holy Spirit floods that chamber with the life and life giving power of the new life in Christ Jesus. When you hear the truth of God's word, you see, this is why you must know because in Ephesians, we saw the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And then it says in verse 13 of Ephesians 1, In whom ye also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, you cannot be saved apart from the word of God and the Spirit of God. And the gospel of your salvation in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. But the spirit of the natural man is darkened. We saw that in Second Corinth in First Corinthians two fourteen. We see that why the natural man cannot understand these spiritual truths, but the spirit of the natural man is not only darkened. His will stands as a guard at the door and prevents the entrance of the Holy Spirit until that will, we have a will, surrenders through the power of the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, that the Holy Spirit can enter and take up his abode in the Spirit of man. So, how do, we, how do we know we have a soul and a spirit? All of you know this. We have given this out too many times. We have a body and a soul, but we do not have a spirit of God until our will surrenders 
to the Spirit of God and the Word of God. So we have a soul that uses the five senses of the body as its agent and accepts expression and communion with the outside world. Now you've heard of the five senses of the body, everybody knows that. But the gates of the soul are imagination, conscience, memory, reasons, and affections. You must know these truths. If you don't know these, you'll never know what has happened to you as a true child of God. You are dead until you receive the Spirit of God, but your soul is alive. And that's why you will know when you are in hell. The burning and fire and brimstone, the gnashing of teeth, and the blackness of darkness forever, because you have memory, your soul has memory. And as soon as you die without Christ, you go to this place of torment. You see why we give these words out? You must know these truths. And then the spirit receives impressions of the outward and material things through the soul and the body. You see, the soul and the body. And then when the spirit, the sense faculties of the spirit are the spiritual faculties of faith, hope, reverence, prayer, and worship. You see, all of these are brings together our inheritance in Christ. You see, you can't even have faith. As you accept Christ by faith, you live this book and appropriate his promises daily to your life. That's the abundant life. And then I have hope. And you go to Romans. You see, as you get all of these lessons together, you can see what all we have in Christ and how rich we are. You will never want an earthly inheritance after you hear these lessons. You will never want them because you are never going to live on this earth. You're either going to be in heaven or hell. And then we're going to come back to this earth after the thousand year reign with Christ. And this is going to be our eternal abode. And in Romans 15 verse 13, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. This is what you have. You have no faith, no hope, no reverence. You can't pray because you have to pray in his name and you can't worship. We worship in spirit and in truth. You see why people are so confused because they know none of these truths. And that's why the Lord is giving these out to you through this little servant that loves the Lord and loves you because I have his love. So you see the battlefield of good and evil is in the soul of man. It is not enough that the Holy Spirit should take up his residence in the spirit of man. He must have access to the soul and body. Not until then can a man become dedicated for consecration. It is conditioned on a spirit, feel, body, and soul. A healthy soul and spirit need a healthy body. And if the body is given over to carnality and lust of the flesh, the soul and spirit suffer and the whole man becomes spiritually sick. Spiritually sick. That's what we see in the world today. Because he says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole body, soul, and spirit be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The rapture 
is ready to take place. Are you ready to meet him in the air? Now, our next one, number nine, is his victory. Do you know victory? Do you have any idea what it is to have victory? This wonderful life that he's given to us. Here are the last words of our Lord to his own before he went to the cross. After these, he turns to speak to his father and to go to the cross. But he has this further bequest, crouched in one confident, cheering word, victory, his victory. I have overcome the world. And this is in chapter 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. But for us as believers, we can have victory every minute of every day because this is what he wants for us as true believers. What confidence he had. He has met the final enemy, the enemy. To he had met the foe in final combat. He proclaims himself the victor and declares us to be the beneficiary. His victory and all this, we have victory. And here is our Bible verse, 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Victory every minute of every day. This is the greatest bequest for believers, especially today when there's trouble all around. Then under the greatest provocation of hatred and injustice, we will go, he will go to the cross, the sinless for the sinful. He dies the death, death, but he arises from the dead. Victory over the devil, victory over the world, and victory over sin. Are you ready to meet the Lord in the air? Are you ready for the rapture? This is what he has for us. And those of you that don't know Christ as Savior, call upon him today. And I can give you another Bible verse, 1 John 5, verse 4. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Call upon the Lord to save you. The rapture may come before we come back on the air next week. Thank you for hearing. And we praise the Lord for your salvation today. Thank you.